A very warm welcome to the first ever Steel Timber Sports Virtual Australian Championship. But what does virtual mean? Of course, we've got 12 real athletes competing in four different locations all across Australia. And we'll be recording all of them with identical video technology. And these videos, they will be sent to Munich, Germany, to me and our expert, Troy Mannering. Welcome, Troy. Nice to have you in the studio. Hey, Marcus. Glad to be back again. Yeah, we're gonna, uh, looking for a really interesting take on the t Steel Timber Sports this time, the Australian Championships being virtual. We're going to see all these guys really working hard down there in split screen, and you're going to get to see the times that they have, but uh, they don't know what time they've got, um, and we only get to see the times as we go along here. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see how this turns out, and yeah, it's a new way of doing things. Yeah, these days, they need new ideas and i think that is something very special that we're looking forward to yeah i mean corona's made it really difficult with all the lockdowns and everything and travel restrictions and the fact that we're still able to get a little bit of sport in here it's great but you know with all of these other things that are going on uh, you know people's tensions are wound up so oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it's definitely very very important uh, to stay tolerant and to show respect and uh, yeah take a look at this We are Timber Sports, united by passion for the sport and competition. We chop down racism and say yes to tolerance. Yes to tolerance. Say yo, Yes to tolerance. Yes to tolerance. Should I need a tyro? Well, it's that tolerance. Yeah, to tolerance. We are Timber Sports. Well, the Steel Timber Sports family is ready for tolerance and, of course, ready for the competition. So let's take a closer look at the format for tonight. For reasons we're all aware of, the Steel Timber Sports Australian Championships can't be held in the way we all love it. Nevertheless, we have the Virtual Australian Championship for all of you, and this is how it works. Over four days, Australia's top 12 athletes competed at four different locations across Australia. Starting on the 31st of October, the likes of Daniel Gurr, Josh Bakes and Cody Steers competed in Deloraine, Tasmania at the Deloraine Showgrounds. On November 5th, Brad DeLosa's private training facility saw Brad DeLosa himself competing together with David Rumer and Chris Owen in South Bowen Falls, New South Wales. Victoria followed on the 7th of November. At a training facility used by Lawrence O'Toole just outside of Melbourne, Lawrence was joined by Glenn Gillum and the reigning world and Australian champion, Braden Meyer. Finally, on Sunday the 8th of November, Queensland trio Mitch Argent, Jamie Head and Brody Dingle showed what they had at the Head family's chopping area located just outside of Brisbane in Burpengary East, Queensland. To ensure a fair competition, the wood has been produced and selected as per Steel Timber Sports regulations. All athletes took part in a wood draw via video call and their logs were shipped to the locations ahead of the competition. All times will be captured using identical video technology at each location and are kept secret from the athletes. The video footage will be then sent to the Australian officials to analyze and record times. Despite all athletes completing all six disciplines, the Steel Timber Sports knockout system will still be in play. Therefore, unless the athlete advances through the rounds, their times for all disciplines may not be valid. For round one, all 12 athletes' times are valid for the first three disciplines, underhand chop, stock saw, and standing block chop. Points are awarded in each discipline with one point increments, one point for 12th place, up to 12 points for first place. At the end of round one, we lose the bottom four athletes. 
Only the top eight athletes times will be valid for the single buck and springboard. Round two also has a two point increment system between places. At the end of the round, we lose two more athletes, leaving six for round three, the hot saw final. Those six remaining athletes times are valid and points awarded with three point increments. The 2020 Virtual Australian Champion is the athlete with the highest points total at the end of round three. A big shout out to all our athletes in Tasmania, Queensland, New South Wales, and of course, Victoria. And a big shout out to all Steel Timber Sports fans in the whole of the world. Uh, Troy, shall we take a closer look at the athletes? Absolutely. Bunch of good guys here from Australia as well. <laughs> Let's go. Here are the competitors, ladies and gentlemen. First guy up, Daniel Gurr, and you'll see, I mean, among the guys that are competing today, he is probably the slightest, but you have to watch how accurate he is with the axe, in particular on the underhand chop. Uh, this kid can swing it, absolutely. Well, he's like a ninja. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> Sorry, I just said it, but uh, <laughs> it, it does feel like that. And of course, he's not the only one competing today, so uh, let's take a closer look at our next athlete. Chris Owen, and uh, actually Daniel Gurr will be going up against Chris Owen in our first heat of the day. He's a big man. Uh, he's got plenty of power behind him, and uh, his personal best on this particular upcoming discipline, the underhand chop, is just over 21 seconds. And we'll talk a little bit about the wood later on, but uh, you can see here, I mean, he's got his uh, pedigree, so uh, he's going <laughs> to be a good competition for Daniel in this first heat coming up. Yeah, yeah, he's already got his guns out. I, I think this guy is <laughs> he's ready to compete. Uh, and he too will be seeing uh, Josh Bakes take on David Rumo. So uh, Josh is next on our list. Yeah, another guy who's a little bit slighter in stature. You know, he fits in with Daniel Gurr's weight class. So the two of them together could be a really well-matched up pairing. But Josh Bakes, you know, 15th place at the Australia's Championship in 2019. Uh, and uh, he's had one appearance. So, uh, you know, his pedigree is still being built. Uh, but we're going to see some interesting, uh, some interesting action from Josh Bakes. A very sure. talented rookie, of course, yeah. uh, and he will compete against this man, David Rumor. Don't let the name <laughs> fool you. He is not leaving any room at all for mistakes out there. We're going to see this guy going at it hard, and uh, you know you can see there, rookie champion, 2019. So he's already on his way up. Oh yeah, he definitely is. So we're moving on to heat number three, where Cody Stiz uh, will be seen. And uh, this man is very interesting and his weight. Wow, 115 Ks. Yeah, he's a big boy and uh, they call him the Cobra for oh. the speed at which he hits with the axe. So that's a, a great nickname for him. Uh, it is. The haircut <laughs> is, is now been changed. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was hoping that we could have the Trojan lid out there today, but it's not happening. I've been informed that... Uh, that is not going to be flowing, and unfortunately, no hockey hair for us on this one. Well, that's a shame. Let, let, let's take a closer look at his <laughs> competitor in that heat, and that's Jamie Head. Jamie Head, another classic. You, you can see here, fourth place Australian Championship 2016. He's had five appearances there, three times with the team world champion. So, you know, you could tell uh, he's got himself a, pl uh, a lot of experience and um, he's been part of a championship winning team three times. So, you know, he, he knows what to do out there, but this is about the individual tasks. Yeah, I, I remember he's got that uh, certain look when he competes. Uh, very dangerous guy. Um, <laughs> let's find out more about our next competitor, upcoming... Well, Brad Delos, oh, yeah. what can you say about this guy? He a lot, is a lot. the winningest. <laughs> I mean, you really can say a lot. He is the winningest Australian axeman and sawyer for timber sports. And uh, awesome. he has a ton of experience. Been around since pretty much the start of steel timber sports in Australia. When it started 2015, you could say 2016, 17, Australian champion. Um, his pedigree is long. So look for him to be one of the favorites here today. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and Google it if you want to know more about this man, because this is going to take a few minutes. Uh, he'll be up in uh, heat uh, number four against uh, this man here. Brody Dingle. There's a few Dingles in the mix, uh, not for this particular championship, but uh, the Dingle family in general is really deep in timber sports in Australia. So you know that he has it in his mind to do well. Seventh place Australian championships, 19 and back in 15, three appearances. Um, so he wants to step it up a notch this time around for sure. 
And then, of course, uh, Heat 5 of the underhand chop will see this man competing. Glenn Gillum, uh, another member of the Chopperoos and the uh, team world champions currently. Um, and a guy who is known for using this massive axe for the standing block chop, which is a discipline he absolutely is a terror at for the other athletes. So <laughs> keep an eye on him when it comes to the standing block or the underhand. I mean, any of the axe events for Glenn Gillum are, are giveaways. I, I remember him walking past me and I could feel the earth move. This yeah. is true. It was like, <laughs> vroom, vroom. So this man is definitely dangerous and he will compete against... This athlete. Mitch Argent. Another man of uh, young age, but uh, big stature with plenty of experience. Bronze medalist at the Australian Championships in 2015, as you see on screen there. Five appearances. Three-time team world champion with the Chopperoos. Wow. Again, um, you know, he knows exactly what needs to be done out there. Just needs to pull it through. Well, it's 10 awesome names, but just wait for this final heat of round one underhand chop. Yeah, unbelievable. Braden Meyer, the reigning world champion. I have never in my life seen anybody move an axe as fast as this guy did a few years ago. The first time I ever saw him at the uh, champion's trophy and everybody was just aghast at how quickly he moved that accent. It's only gotten faster. So Crazy. he's an absolute favorite here today. No doubt about it. Uh, unreal, this guy. And, and, and just wait for the athletes that we're going to show you now that Braden Meyer is going to be competing in the first heat against. Junior Lawrence <laughs> yes. O'Toole. I mean, undoubtedly the biggest guy as far as height is concerned, the 2018 individual world champion, part of the team that won the team world championship last year, the Chopperoos. Um, he too is an absolute beast when it comes to the competition scene. And you can see in some of, if you go on YouTube and look at some of the competitions, you can see he's coming from behind and in that uh, single block and that standing block chop, he just tears it apart. So oh, I mean, he absolutely. is a solid athlete. Absolutely. If you haven't seen this man compete, uh, ladies and gentlemen, do it. Watch it on YouTube. This guy is absolutely amazing. But at 12 athletes, they have one goal and that's to become the first ever virtual Australian champion of steel timber sports uh, and uh, how they have to compete and what uh, the tools look like. And the first discipline, well, we'll show you right now. Underhand chop. In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes cut through a 32 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. I know this is not live live, but uh, it feels very much live because neither Troy nor me know any times and not even the athletes. So um, this is going to be a big surprise uh, for everyone. And I think it's time to start the competition. It's time to take a look at the start list. Troy Mannering, are you ready? I am definitely ready. And there we go. Underhand chop. Uh, 12 athletes, six heats in this first discipline in round number one. Daniel Gurr, as we mentioned, going up against Chris Owen. Uh, right off the hop, Daniel Gurr from his stature has a disadvantage because he's not as heavy. But he is, as I mentioned, very, very accurate with that axe. So we will see what kind of a difference that makes for him. It's a bit like me taking on you. Yeah, exactly. You have to be super accurate, and I would just have to hope I wouldn't cut my leg off or something like that, you know? Uh, and then you can see heat number two, Bakes, Rumor, and then Steers, Head, Delosa, Dingle. That should be an interesting one. Strong man there, Brad Delosa. And then Gillum and Argent going up against each other. Then Braden Meyer and Lawrence O'Toole rounding out that first discipline. 
should be interesting to watch how this breaks down. There's a lot of good athletes in this group. I mean, you can really say that Australia is balanced as far as their athletic competitive no doubt timber about sportsman that. is. I mean, it's unbelievable the talent that's coming out of this country. So let's get it on. Let's start the first heat, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get ready for the virtual Australian champion here at the Steel Timber Sports Competition. Off we are. So there you see Daniel Gurren. Hi, I'm right Daniel away. Gurr. I'm 23 years old from Delarain, Tasmania. To be here today competing in my hometown, especially after not competing for quite a while, um, it's really exciting, that's for sure. Um, it'll be interesting to see how I go. I hope that, that I can um, post a few good times and um, hopefully you know, give a few of the, the good guys on the mainland a run for their money. And here we have Chris Hi, I'm Chris Owen. I'm 31 years old. I'm from Grafton, New South Wales. It's really good to get back. It was starting to get to the point where you start wondering how long is it going to be until we get back on the scene. I've probably done the same amount of prep as I would normally do leading into a carnival like this for this format, but I'm just missing the, um, the chopping disciplines that we normally do all year, so just had to work a little bit harder on them than I normally do. So, as I was saying, Daniel Gurr, 175 centimeters tall, 65 kilograms, and compared to 115 kilograms and 180 centimeters tall, yeah, uh, there's a massive difference in the power to weight ratio here, but the accuracy is the big thing for Daniel Gurr. And um, let's see how he holds Stand up against Chris Owen timber. in this first heat. Let's get it on. Three, two, one, go. Good start for both Daniel and Chris. Unfortunately, we don't have a camera angle from the front side or the back side of that block where they're hitting right now, but Chris Owen already moved over to the other side. So obviously he's been working hard to try and get those first few four, five, six hits on the back side to, he can move over to the front side quickly. Daniel Gurr, you can see how clean his cuts are though. And wow, how close was that? Oh my goodness. It was just one small hit away for Chris Owen and Daniel Gurr got it in a time of 22.58. So. The cut was good. Cut is good. Judges say the cuts are good for both of these gentlemen, and it was just a last little hit mistake by Chris Owen that cost him. There you go, right there. The, the, actually, the log is split, but he stepped off, and he has to be on to separate the log, and that was the difference maker right there. Otherwise, he might have actually been the winner, and you can see Daniel Gurr just really focusing on those big, long strokes. And there you see that accuracy. Very nice right there. So first heat, Daniel Gurr, Chris Owen. Daniel taking this one. So for now, he's got the 12 points locked down, but there are 10 other athletes in four or five more heats to go. Let's see how this breaks down. My name's Josh Bakes, 23 years old, from Sheffield, Tasmania. During the uh, COVID pandemic, I've been at home uh, training hard, keeping it up, because I always knew we were still going to have a competition. Yeah, so moving up into the pro division now, I really do feel like I've earned my spot. I, um, I want to lay down some good times here and really show them that I do have a spot in this. Can you just talk for us, Steve? Camera crew ready? Name's David Rumer, 25 years old, from the Southern Highlands of New South Wales. I haven't competed since February, so being able to get a chance to compete in a competition for this year is, um, is pretty good. Yeah, maybe to get a chance to compete. Uh, being the rookie champion sort of coming up puts a bit of um, bit of pressure on you, I think, to sort of try and prove that you're the next lot coming through. Um, try and push some of these older fellas out of the way, and so it's my time, you've had yours, it's my time to go now. So Josh Bakes up against David Rumor. Josh Bakes, the rookie coming into the pro division now. He did hold for a short time the rookie world record in the underhand chop of 15.98, but that was on a 30 centimeter block, so it was two centimeters smaller than what the guys are using Stand here. Stand to your timber. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. 
So Josh Bakes likes, absolutely likes the axing disciplines. The axe disciplines are his favorite, where David Rumor prefers the saw disciplines, but says he can hold his own. Both of them moving over to the other side of the block fairly quickly, and uh, their pace seems to be well matched with each other. Now it's just about a question of who's got that lucky hit to get through, and it looks, oh, I thought it was going to be Bakes, but it's Rumor at 18.99. Good time for him. And second place right there with a 28-6 for Josh Bakes. Nice step into the pro division for the young the man. The cap was good. All right, Josh Bakes on his turn over to the front side. Getting some nice big hits in there. You can see slabbing out nicely. Gets a good clean cut through, but... He was just a hair behind David Rumor, the big man with the heavy axe. And uh, for a guy who says he prefers the sawing disciplines, he held his own absolutely well in that underhand chop. All right, so here you see how the point system works. It's based on the times. Rumor with an 18.99 moves up into the top spot, takes over those 12 points. Josh Bakes with a 20.86, just 1.87 off the pace, gets the 11 points, and that means Gurr and Owen move down two spots to three and four, respectively. Let's get into our next heat. Uh, I'm Cody Steers, 25 years old, and I'm from Sheffield, Tasmania. Yeah, pretty excited to be back into the timber sports with a, a bit of a delay, but um, that's always good to uh, get back into it for sure. Not knowing the times, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a game changer, I suppose. Uh, generally, you know, at the timber sports, you're, you're backstage and you're looking at all the times and working out where you're going to be, especially with the point system. Let me know when you're ready, mate. My name's Jamie Head, I'm 34 and I'm from Burpengary, Queensland. Yeah, I'm really keen. We haven't had a cut since uh, March, so, um, you know, keen to get back out there and uh, try and blow a few cobwebs out. Not knowing the times, I don't think it's going to worry me too much. Like, you know if you've had a good cut or a bad cut, and you can only control what you can do, so it's no point worrying about what everyone else is doing. So Cody Steers and Jamie Head, a couple of guys that are pretty well matched up there. I'm uh, curious to see how Cody Steers, with his nickname The Cobra for his quick strikes on the underhand chop, will be uh, Stand doing in the underhand timber. here against Jamie. Three, two, one, go! Jamie, a consistent top-tier athlete in Steel Timber Sports, and you can see there Steers already quick with that axe and all moved over to the other side so fast. Jamie Head now joining him, but Steers definitely has the advantage. It's all about the big hits and the power for Jamie Head, but wow, what a time for Cody Steers. 15.55, that will put him in first place with a bullet. Jamie Head dropping it at 22.81. Cut is good. Cut is good. So we have good cuts for both of the guys here. And there you can see Jamie Head switching over to the other side. He was just taking those big power strokes at that block. He finally gets through it, but unfortunately his time just wasn't a match for Cody Steers, the Cobra. Great nickname. I love it. It's fantastic. So there you see Cody Steers moving up into the lead with a solid 3.44 second difference ahead of David Rumer, who has now moved into second place. Josh Bakes, Daniel Gurr in third and fourth. Jamie Head with his time slips into fifth place, and that pushes Owen down into sixth. G'day, I'm Brad DeLosa, I'm 43 from Lithgow, New South Wales. Yeah, I had a good break, I didn't do a great deal of training in that time, but uh, yeah, the last sort of month or so I've been back into it and um, yeah, really enjoying it, so yeah, looking forward to, to getting out and giving it a bit of a crack. 
probably coming in a little bit underdone, you know, because we haven't had any pre-competitions. But uh, yeah, certainly looking forward to, to getting out there and, and getting into it again. I'm Brody Dingle, 31, I'm from Idesville, Queensland. Yeah, any time to get a go at uh, Steel Timber Sports events, great, and particularly this year being a COVID year, it's our first event since March, so yeah, I'm pretty anxious and a little bit nervous, but it should be good. Competing without a crowd is something that I'm actually a little bit worried about. I really like a, a crowd and a, an atmosphere and a bit of music. I sort of feed on that a bit, so yeah, not having that this year is going to be a different mindset. Brad DeLosa, the legend, up against Brody Dingle, the dark horse here for me, as well as for many others. Uh, consistent across all of the disciplines, was sixth in this discipline back in 2019. So he'll be looking to place middle of the pack again today and try and stay in the mix to get to the next round. Brad DeLosa, well, you don't need to say much about Stand this guy. He's just timber. solid when it comes Three, to timber sports two, in general. Here we go. One, go! Wow, these guys are in sync with their hits here. Dingle now picking up the pace a little bit. Brad DeLosa going for those nice, heavy, accurate shots. Brad is moving over to the other side, just a hair ahead of Dingle. And Dingle keeping up that pace. Now Brad DeLosa has picked up the pace on the backside of his block. Will he get through before Dingle will? Yes, he will at 21.30 and a 22.68 for Dingle. And that means fourth and sixth positions respectively for those two gentlemen. So Dingle in sixth at the moment is just two spots, uh, two spots of leeway there for the making it into the next round, but there's two disciplines still to come. So let's see how things pan out as we go through our last two heats. Let's take a look at these one more time in slow-mo. You can see there. A nice drop by Brad DeLosa as he steps down. He's looking calm, cool, and confident. Really nice hits from Dingle there. First two on that one side, then slabbing out, moving over to the other side. Oh, he got his ax caught, and that caused him a little bit of a delay as uh, he takes out our camera on the way over. Good thing Boomer wasn't there. I'd rather they say he would have probably broken a hand or something. All right, so... Yeah, that time of 15.55 keeps Cody Steers at the top of the ranking so far. Delosa in fourth and Dingle in sixth. He's a little bit lower than middle of the pack in this first discipline, so he'll want to pick up the pace in the next two disciplines. But we've still got two more heats to go with Glenn Gilliam and Mitch Argent. G'day, Glenn Gillam here, 37 years of age, come from Toongabi, Victoria. First time to cut in a competition for a while, but how would you say? Glad to be back, out of the paddock, out of the tractor seat, so just looking forward to having a day off. Today will be interesting, no competitors beside us for the first time, so it's just a do or die event, and at the end of the day, we'll just see what happens. It'll just do the same thing today like I normally do, just go out and be me. Hi, I'm Mitch Argent, 26, from Blackbutt, Queensland. Yeah, first drop shift smart, so definitely good to get back into it after COVID and um, hopefully it kicks off again and we can continue competing. You know, it's probably going to feel more like a, a training run than a, um, than a competition, but at the end of the day, it's still, still pretty fair income. So um, yeah, I'll see how we go when we get out there, I suppose. So both of these gentlemen are members of the Chopperoos team and they do have a standing rivalry for the underhand chop between them. Glenn Gillum has the bragging rights having had the better times up till this point. Mitch Argent Stand will definitely want timber. to make a comeback here and try and take those Three, rights two, away from one, Glenn. Go. Big stick for both of these guys right off the hop, but then Glenn Gillum gets the action going. Oh, he sticks again. That's tough with that ax moving as quickly as it was. He was uh, wanting to get it back moving again, and Mitch Argent moves to the other side. Glenn Gillum moving that ax quickly again. It looks like he has the advantage here, and he's going to get through in a 15-7-6. Still a little bit slower than top spot, but he has second place locked down. Mitch Argent with a nice time of 19-11 will sit in fourth place. Cut is good. The cut is good. Oh, yeah, there, I believe we're looking at Mitch Argent's 
feet there as uh, he steps down. Is that Mitch? Yes, it is. So not a bad time for him. Glenn Gillum, meanwhile, wow, he was just attacking that log. Were it not for a couple of sticks, there's one right there. Um, he might have been even quicker and taking over the top spot, but Glenn is going to be sitting in second place so far in underhand chop when we look at that ranking board. And there you go. Steer still at the top with 1555, but Glenn Gillum just 21 hundredths of a second behind him. And Mitch Argens moved into fourth place, pushing everybody else down a notch. And that means we have one more heat to go between Braden Meyer and Lawrence O'Toole, couple of world champions going head to head with each other. I'm Braden Meyer from Broadford, Victoria, and I'm 25 years of age. I'm, I'm really excited for this event this weekend. Um, we haven't chopped for six or eight months now, and probably my real big chop was at the World Championships year, last year. So it's exciting to be here, and hopefully we can have a good day. Yeah, it's going to be a different feeling um, competing with no crowds and a different feeling for this event. Um, yeah, it's going to be different, but we'll make the most of it. My name's Lawrence O'Toole. I'm 39 years old from Doncaster, Victoria. Yeah, it's great to be back on the competition field. Um, it's been a while off, I've sort of been really looking forward to it. I think my strategy will remain the same, you know, you can only do what you can do. And I know my ability and I know how I can perform, so I'm pretty confident that, you know, that, that won't change anything for me. Well, what can you say about a couple of world champions in the individual discipline other than this is going to be a heat for the ages? Personal best for Braden Meyer happens to also be a world record in the underhand chop that he set back in 2015 in Poland. Stand to that doesn't your mean that Lawrence O'Toole is any Three, slouch when it comes two, to this one, discipline. It's just the faster act speed of Braden Meyer. And you can see right away for every single hit from Lawrence O'Toole, we have two and a half from Braden Meyer. And Meyer's already moved over to the other side of the block. I don't think we're going to see any world record drop here today because the wood is a little bit harder, but it is a quick one for Braden. Meyer 1437 he takes over the top spot Lawrence O'Toole with a 1620 is moved into fourth place pushing everybody down great heat right there and that means it's going to be the Cobra and Braden Meyer in the top two spots there and I guess we're going to have a look back to see what those two guys look like compared to each other There you see Lawrence O'Toole. He's a big man at 195 centimeters, so a meter and 95 tall. So he's got lots of distance from when that ax head swings down to gain some speed and power. And, uh, you know, like I said, he's no slouch with these ax disciplines, but Braden Meyer, I mean, the speed at which he moves that ax head is just, ah, I don't know. There's no other word than lightning fast. So Braden Meyer moves into the top spot with a 1437. Cody Steers still with a great time of 1555. And you can see a 1.18 second differential between those two. And we'll have a side-by-side -side comparison of those two guys shortly. But unbelievable. Great speed by Braden Meyer, even with the harder wood. Fantastic. Are you kidding me? What a start in this Steel Timber Sports Virtual Australian Championship. What a first round. I mean, I, I can't believe it. I mean, Troy, I, I, I've seen you get excited, but I was like, I don't believe it. It was unreal. It was absolutely fantastic. And I think we should take a closer look at the top two in comparison. And hopefully, Troy, you're going to join in on this one. Oh, you know it. <laughs> Let's go for it. Try and shut me up. Here we go. Let's see the <laughs> side by sides on these guys. So oh, wow. there you see. I, I, I can't believe the speed. The way, I mean, both the axes yeah. up, down, up, down. Unreal. Yeah, but you can see how quickly that axe is moving from Braden Meyer. And uh, I mean, Cody is not that far behind in axe speed. And you can see it was just two hits difference. I don't think that was Cody, actually. That was, uh, yeah, it was Kobe, Cody Steers. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, the two of them are really, really evenly matched as far as that. But as, as, if you're gonna get right down to the brass tacks, there's just no one on the planet that has a faster ax than Braden Meyer. It's 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know if anybody is oh, going to oh, be able to keep up with him. Oh, that's the secret. It's the axe that's so fast. Not, Absolutely. not the arms and the hands. Yeah, I think the head of the axe is hollow or something. I have no idea how he We need to so take quickly. a closer look at that axe. Yeah. That is absolutely crazy. But that was only discipline one as we move on uh, to stock saw and everything you need to know about the tool and the discipline while well, it's coming up right now for your entertainment. Stock saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark. One downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. The steel MS661CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. I hope you guys at home are ready for stock saw. Here is the starting order. So we got David Rumer take on Josh Bakes in heat number one, followed by Cody Steers and Chris Owen in heat two. Heat three consists of Glenn Gillum and Brody Dingle. In heat number four, we'll get to see Daniel Gurr and Mitch Argent. Heat 5, Lawrence O'Toole taking on Jamie Head. And in Heat 6, it will be Braden Meyer and Brad DeLosa. Can't wait for Stockso to start. Take over, Mr. Expert. <laughs> I love it, Expert. That's well, so are. far off the mark, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there you see David Rumer. And uh, he admittedly says he's not the strongest when it comes to the stock saw. He's been training a lot with Brad DeLosa to try and improve his stock saw. And he's about two seconds off the pace of everybody else in the competition. Josh Bakes, he's pretty much in the mix here. Um, also, as a rookie, he needs to take steps to improve every step of the way. So uh, let's see how this goes. Saws are warmed up and running. And these are the standard saws you can get off the shelf in stock saw, hence the name. And here we go. Josh Bakes looks like he's got a good flow going on that uh, first cut. Now on the upstroke, got to make sure you don't cut those lines. And David Rumor, interesting, he is opting to go back to the top for his second cookie. Now, I don't know if that was because he cut through the line or if something else happened there. Let's see. Yep, yeah, he obviously didn't have a complete cookie on his first cut. And uh, you can see his nerves really getting the better of him as he took a long time to get two complete cookies onto the floor. And that's the main thing. you got to have two complete yeah, cookies, and you can't line. go over the line. And we have a DQ there, so... The cut yeah. is good. So Josh Bakes had a very good down and upstroke. Not a lot of downswing. We'll take a look at this in review again. Ah, right there. He saw that come outside of the disc or the cookie, so he started again and then had to restart after that. Didn't feel good about that cookie at all, so David Rumer needs to go back to the drawing board. Meanwhile, Cody Bakes, or Josh Bakes, excuse me, there was a solid first cut right there. We didn't get to see the upswing on the change, but it was pretty good. So Josh Bakes with a 14.05, that's the time to beat for the moment. And a DQ for David Rumer. And then we'll take a look at the overall rankings now that the points have been added up. And there you see Josh Bakes will take over the top spot for the moment, having 18 points total. David Rumer will have to settle for the eight points that he got in the first discipline. And we go to heat number two with Cody Steers and Chris Owen. Steers is another youngster who hasn't quite mastered the stock saw discipline, ranked 11th and uh, looking to improve here. Chris Owen, on the other hand, ranked 7th in Australia. And uh, yeah, his personal best there, 1260. These guys aren't too far Stand apart from each other in their personal best. So let's Three, see how this one goes two, down today one, between these go. two. Oh, a little bit of a bobble there by Steers as he finally gets a grip on the handle. 
and he's got a quick downstroke even with the mistake. Steers looking very good. Owen managed to get back on the upstroke and it looks like he might break through faster. Yeah, 15.28 by Owen and a 15.51 by Steers. Some good times for both of them, personal bests. So that is a solid showing. Let's see if the judges say they're okay. The cut is good. The cut was good. All right, so good cuts on both sides. Improvements in their times on both sides. And here you can see thin to win. Nice thin cut, keeping it straight. You don't want to overpressure the saw because that might actually, and there, you see he hit the brake. Ah, oh, that was the problem. He hit the brake, and then he's got himself a thin, oh my God, that is paper thin. That helps the cut speed on the way down, but on the way back up, he was just a bit too slow. And the improvement here goes to Chris Owen. So there you see Chris Owen with the faster time between the two. And uh, he's got a 15 21, 123 off pace, sitting in second place in Stock Saw with Steers in third place in Stock Saw. Steers, though, gets the 21 point score now with that new ranking set up in the overall, takes over top spot just ahead of Josh Bakes, and then Owen in third place. Well, with uh, two heats done, that gives us the chance uh, to talk to Cody Steers, who's on top of the list for the moment. Uh, Cody. Yeah, well, it wasn't a real good start, even in the warm-up. I accidentally flicked the saw off for some reason. Um, never even really done that when I've been training. And then, uh, yeah, I uh, set myself. I, I thought I was about right. Um, and, yeah, I must have just had the saw... A little bit back, a little, a little bit uh, too close to me, and uh, when I've come down to pick it up, I've uh, flicked the chain brake on. So when I've got to the log, yeah, it's all going go. So then I had to flick the chain brake off. So by then you've lost probably two seconds, and then um, yeah, that just sort of rattled me for the whole thing, and I was just pretty rough through the wood as well. I was pretty slow. Um, yeah, so. Uh, I was, yeah, I was, wasn't a DQ, I suppose. That's, a, that's the only positive. But, uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. Um, yeah, a bit unlucky. But, uh, yeah, I was still uh, four, four disciplines ago, so we'll worry about them. Well, Cody not too happy uh, with that discipline. Yeah, I mean, it was just a small fumble where he got the hand. You could see it in the slow-mo, and it was really obvious. He reached up and grabbed the brake, uh, which stops the chain. Um, and he had to, to push it back out to get the saw going again. But he got a really thin cut on the way down, so he was fast anyway on the way down. But on the way back up, he was just too thick and too slow, and uh, that gave it to, to Chris in that case. So, yeah, well, advantage the other way. Best of luck to him for the next uh, coming up yep. discipline. And, of course, there's so many disciplines and there's so many competition that you can watch on Amazon Prime. So make sure to get that done. Take a closer look at this. Oh my God, how close is this? It's one of the closest heats we've had all day long, and it's Australia! When the crowd start, you know, uh, erupting, screaming, shouting, it's, it just really does give you goosebumps. It's pretty awesome to compete in front of a crowd like this. I've been working my ass off the last five years to get to this point. <laughs> is it going to be the checker moment? Yes, it is! And the crowd goes to Damon! Goes there as he moves. Oh! Then goes down. He's looking good! It might make some people nervous. It doesn't make me nervous. It makes me ready to go. To come here to the World Championships is, is one of my dreams. It has been ever since as a kid. Battery power made by Still. 
only from your local steel dealer. Next tee warming up. Glenn Gillum getting his saw running, going up against Brody Dingle. Brody, super relaxed competitor, but for Glenn, this discipline is his kryptonite in two of the last three events. He's placed dead last in stock saw, so this is a thing that he wants to shake. If he can get that monkey off his back, he will be one of the most complete timber sportsmen out there. Let's see if he can do it today. Three, two, one, go! Good start. Deep positioning for Glenn Gillum on the left-hand side of your screen. Meanwhile, Dingle, oh, look at this. These guys are dead even. Dingle has a light, slight better stroke on the up. Oh, and he's got a great time. 11.81. Nice job. And Glenn Gillum with that a 12.25. Good. So both of them good. getting good cuts, and that means we're going to have a big change in the overall rankings as well. But let's look at the stock saw review first before we check out the rankings. Brody Dingle, just really relaxed, not too much pressure on the saw, letting the blade or the chain do the work. Now watch the upswing here, hardly any. Glenn Gillum, meanwhile, this is a good look for Glenn, getting down deep in that position. He's obviously been working this because he knows it's one of the weaker disciplines for him. And there you see Dingle with a nice fine finish. And then we'll take a look at the stock saw ranking first. So Dingle and Gillum, one and two in the uh, ranking here for stock saw. That's going to bode well for them in the overall standings. That pushes everybody down two spots. And in the overall, Gillum and Dingle. Oh, Gillum goes up to the top with 21 points. Dingle with 15 sits in fourth place. So Steers and Bakes in second and third, respectively. And uh, there we see the shake and bake that happens in the overall rankings during these events. And that's what makes it so exciting as we get closer down. All right, up next, Danny Gurr against Mitch Argent. All right, Daniel Gurr, as we mentioned earlier, uh, very, very accurate with the axe. Let's see how he does with the stock saw. You can see his personal best of 1250. So in that respect, the uh, young man has a slight advantage over Mitchell Argent Stand in this particular discipline. Timber. Let's see if he can hold Three, that down two, against the vet. One, go! Yeah, really quick start on that stock saw by Daniel Gurr, Mitch Argent. Oh, Mitch is just slightly behind Gurr. On the upstroke, Argent looks a little bit better, and he's got the better time, 12.21, and Daniel, uh, Daniel Gurr with a 12.68, so that'll put him fourth in stock saw, and it looks like there's a slight review cut going on for Mitch Argent. Hopefully his cuts are good. Cut is good. Confirmed the cuts are good for Mitch Argent, so we're good to move ahead and take a look at the review. Great start there by Daniel Gurr. He had a really quick attack on the log. Similar for Mitch Argent, he was a bit slower on the downstroke, but on that upstroke, he was just not beatable. And you can see nice and thin there by Daniel Gurr on the upstroke. Mitch Argent's angle, I think, was the difference maker there, just slightly faster. And let's take a look at the stock saw rankings here. So Mitch Argent slips into second place. Daniel Gurr in fourth with a 12.21 and 12.68 respectively. And you can see it's not that much. In the, between top spot and fourth place in the stock saw, it's only 0.87. And Mitch Argent just slides into second place in the overall ranking. Daniel Gurr in sixth place there with a couple more heats to go. So uh, it's shucking and jiving and shifting and uh, changing as we go through here. O'Toole. Lawrence O'Toole took first place in the stock saw at the 2018 Australian Championship. His personal best is a very respectable 1167, just one hundredths of a second ahead of Jamie Head. So let's see if these guys can Stand match their personal bests timber. here. We've seen some good times so far two, today. One, go! Wow, look how quick they both were getting up onto those blocks. Jeez, how close is this? Jamie Head and 
Lawrence O'Toole. Oh, God! Ten hundredths of a second difference between the two, two and uh, Jamie Head gets it just by a hair of his chinny, chin, chin. Holy smokes, That's folks. Good. That one's going to go to video review. There's no doubt about it. That is good. Oh, my goodness. We're going to go back and look at the slow-mos on that one because that was dead close between these two guys. Lawrence O'Toole right there. So efficient getting up there. Good pressure on that saw. Jamie Head as well. Complete focus. Good cuts by both of these guys. Jamie Head no swing at all on the transition from down to upstroke. What a finish. I want to see these times here one more time. Look at that. Jamie Head, 11.80. Lawrence O'Toole, 11.90. Ten hundredths of a second difference. And Dingle sitting in the middle between those two guys in the top three. Let's take a look at the overall standings. And the shift is on. Lawrence O'Toole now takes over the top spot. Glenn Gillum sitting in second. And Mitch Argent sitting in third. Cody Steers moves down to fourth place. Jamie Head is sitting in sixth. And Braden Meyer at the moment is on the bubble he hasn't gone in his heat yet, but he's on the bubble in eighth place. So Braden Meyer is up next going against Brad DeLosa. Braden Meyer becoming quickly a legend in timber sports with the way he uses the axe. And we all know Brad DeLosa is a living legend in the sport. But Braden Meyer has a personal best of 10.48. So that signals to me there's an advantage for Meyer Stands in this discipline here. Let's see if Three, DeLosa can two, keep up with him. One, go! You can see the angle Meyer uses to get in there. Brad DeLosa opting for a bit of a flatter angle, but a very efficient upstroke return by Braden Meyer. DeLosa right there with him, but I think Braden Meyer is going to get through this one, and he does in 13.76, and Brad DeLosa in 15 good times. Not personal best for either of these two gentlemen as the judges take a quick the check. good. The athlete's cut was good. All right, so two good cuts by Braden Meyer and Brad DeLosa. And you can see Brad had that mark on the top of the log to give him a guideline to make sure he stays really thin on that first cut. Check the angle of the blade of the saw for Braden Meyer. The body or the motor of the saw barely moves and he's using the angle pressure to push down. And meanwhile, Brad DeLosa had a little bit of a slower upward cut, maybe putting a little bit too much pressure on the upward cut. And we take a look here. Yeah, both Meyer and DeLosa pretty low down in the times as far as the stock saw is concerned, but We'll see them shift a little bit higher in the rankings once we take a look at the overall. Let's watch this. And there you see, oh, DeLosa drops down outside of the top eight. Meanwhile, Braden Meyer moves into third place. So that is a tough position for Brad DeLosa to be in because he is outside the top eight that will move on to the next round if he cannot make a major improvement in the standing block chop. Well, I'm starting to really enjoy this virtual competition, and I've got two times for you. 11.80 and 11.81. <laughs> Troy, what's going on? We need to take a closer look at, at this head-to-head because -head, uh, that was unreal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen some good times from these guys so far today. And if we look at this head-to-head -head once again, I mean, Lawrence O'Toole and Glenn Gillum at the top of the overall standings here. As uh, we take a quick look at our overall standings before we go to the head-to-head, -head, and Braden Meyer still in the mix. Glenn Gillum really making a push to take the Australian Championship down. Lawrence O'Toole, he's done it before. He wants to do it again. And, of course, you know, Braden Meyer and Mitch Argent uh, are definitely going to be pushing hard from those two positions yeah, down below the third and only one point between fourth. the three, so yeah, that's... There's not that much difference right now. We've got one more discipline to go in round one, though. <laughs> yeah, one point the difference and one... Is that is that a hundredth of a second? Yeah, that one hundredth of a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to take a look at that one hundredth of a second. Yeah, it was Let's go head to head. All right, here we go. 
So watch the start here by both of these guys. Oh, that's where he lost it. No, it isn't. Jamie Head. Oh, look at that. It's unreal. I mean, no. The, the upswing was here? non-existent. Is, is, is it here? Is it Switch. Here? Nah. Look at that. Hardly. I mean. You, I can't you, see it. <laughs> you absolutely need those high-speed cameras in order to see the difference between those guys. And that's why these pictures were sent in advance to the judging crew to make sure that those times were as accurate as possible. One one hundredth of a second. That's minuscule. But it made the difference between first and second place in the heat. And receiving 12 or 11 points. Exactly. So uh, there is a difference. Uh, we've got one more discipline coming up, ladies and gentlemen, in this first round, and that's the standing block chop. All you need to know about this discipline coming up now. Standing block chop. At the standing <coughs> block chop, the felling of a tree with an axe is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 30 centimeters has to be cut through both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. I am ready. So is Troy Mannering. We just need to find out the starting order for this discipline. Let's take a closer look at that. In heat one, ladies and gentlemen, will be Brody Dingle and Chris Owen. Heat 2 consists of Josh Bakes and Daniel Gurr. In Heat 3, we'll see Jamie Head and David Rumer. Heat 4, Brad DeLosa and Lawrence O'Toole. In Heat 5, Cody Steers will take on Braden Meyer. And in Heat 6, we'll see Glenn Gillum and Mitch Argent. Can't wait to get this on. Standing block job coming up in just a few seconds. Standing block. All right, Brody Dingle, not known as a really strong standing block chop man, but uh, he is known to have fast times when he needs them in this discipline. Chris Owen, uh, or excuse me, it was Chris Owen that uh, can get those fast times when he needs them. Brody Dingle and Chris Owen pretty evenly matched here, actually, if you look at their personal best times. And as far as their, yeah, their body size and mass goes, they're also fairly evenly matched. They're both 31 years old. One's Stand 180 centimeters tall. Timber. One's 185. Five, Three, they're all two, you know, one, ready go. to go, and we're into it. Standing block chop, a quick stick by Owen on his side that slowed him down, and Brody Dingle, with his relaxed art, is taking down big slabs as he moves over to the other side first. Chris Owen, meanwhile, has taken a couple of extra hits and has moved over a little bit after Dingle. Chris Owen now fighting from behind, both of them with respectable times no personal best for either of them a 2016 and a 2104 respectively the cap was good all right looking back at the slow-mo here Brody Dingle getting deep on those first two hits and then over to the top and you can see big slabs coming off of that first side as he tries to get in deep. Chris Owen also slabbing out nicely. A little bit of a slip on the angle there on that third or fourth hit. I'm not sure which one it was, but uh, final blow was heavy. Brody Dingle as well. So for both of those guys, we're not going to call them personal best times or world record times, but good enough to get them some points to start off this third discipline in round one. And we take a look at the overall standings. Brody Dingle has enough points to move into the top spot. How long that will last depends on how the other guys do here. And let's not forget, too, in this third discipline in round one, it's all about getting as fast a time as possible to be among the top eight because only the top eight athletes will move on to the next round. And now we have Josh Bakes and Daniel Gurr up against each other. Now here we see the young man Josh Bakes has a personal best of 24.48. Daniel Gurr 20.29. So we wanted to see this matchup Stand at the beginning of the competition. Timber. And now we're going to see Three, the two, two young one, thin gentlemen go. going up against each other. Will they improve on their personal best here today? Let's see. Josh Bakes in the green on the left-hand side. Daniel Gurr on the orange on the right-hand side. Daniel is the first one to move over. 
And these guys both on the same stage by the sounds of it as they go head to head with each other. Josh Bakes really high on his block. And it's Daniel Gurr with a 22-9-0. So he did a great job there. Cut Josh Bakes with a 24-15. Cut is good. Taking a look back. Daniel Gurr, again, the precision of his cuts plays such a big role in how quickly he can get through these logs because he is not one of those big, monster, muscle-bound guys. And Josh Bakes. You know, these two guys are going to have long careers in steel timber sports as we take a look here. And there we see 22-9-0 and 24-15, their time, sitting in third and fourth place in standing block chop. And uh, let's see how that affects them in the overall rankings. Oh, Daniel Gurr and Josh Bakes moved into second and third place. I'm pretty sure that's not going to last too long, though, because Lawrence O'Toole and Glenn Gillum are a couple of guys that will be going up or not against each other, but will be coming later on. And Glenn Gillum is no slouch when it comes to the standing block chop. Neither is Jamie Head. And he is up against David Rumor. David Rumor holds the rookie world record for standing block at 12.16. And uh, that's on a 27 centimeter block. And the blocks that they're using today are three centimeters wow, larger in diameter. So that's obviously going to play a role here. Stand to Jamie your heads. timber. Three, He actually two, manufactures one, his go. own axe handle so that he could create an axe handle that works best for his type of hold and the best swing possible. David Rumor and Jamie Head both moving over to the backside of their blocks quickly and with each other. David Rumor getting some big slabs and his top looks like it's going to go off first before Jamie Head. Good time for David Rumor. And that's a 19-2-9. Jamie Head with a 23-0-2. So that time for David Rumor is going to mean a good amount of points for now. That is good. Awesome. Athletes Cup was good. I don't know if that's a river in the background or if it's raining like crazy where rumor is, but uh, both of these guys just going at it big time. Jamie Head seemed to have a little bit of trouble here. Rumor, on the other hand, was slabbing out nicely, and it was just one of these hits here that loosed the top of that block slightly, just needed one more to drop it. Good job by Rumor, David Rumor, and then Jamie Head finally lopping that block off, so... Rumor with a 19.29 has the fastest time so far in standing block chop. That puts him on top for the moment. Jamie Head with a 23.02 is about mid pack at the moment. And uh, that will definitely change when we see our next heat come up. Because Brad DeLosa is going up against Lawrence O'Toole. A couple of absolute beasts when it comes to this discipline here. Lawrence O'Toole, definitely the advantage in my eyes. He can uh, step farther away from the block. His legs start at his neck, so he can really use those to his advantage. And he's got a slightly faster personal best than Brad DeLosa. So let's see how this one loads into the blocks, as we say. Stand to your timber. Brad DeLosa Three, needs to make two, this happen. He's one, sitting in the go. drop zone at the moment. He is on the bubble, as you would call it, because he uh, was sitting in 10th place after the stock saw, which was not a strong discipline for him. And uh, he needs to do well here today against Lawrence O'Toole. Both passing their best times now. And as I said, this is harder wood here. 17.42 for Lawrence O'Toole. And Brad DeLosa drops it in 22.29. That is not going to help him in the overall standings. He's sitting in eighth place. The count was good. The count was good. 
So judges call both cuts for these guys good, and that means Lawrence O'Toole will have won this heat, but again, it's down to the times, and we'll see that when we take a look at the times for the standing block chop. Lawrence O'Toole just using every ounce of his height. Brad DeLosa choking up on the axe a bit, a little bit closer to the block, and uh, you can see just that little last hit to drop the drop top of the block there was the difference maker, and Lawrence O'Toole really putting his core strength into it. You can see the twist of the hips, the push on that back foot. And let's take a look at the standing block rankings here. So Lawrence O'Toole, as expected, on top of the 17-4-2. Brad DeLosa, fifth place here in standing block. But as I mentioned, that puts him in eighth place in the overall standings. So he is literally on the bubble with another two heats yet to be played out between a couple of very strong boys. Well, thanks very much, Troy. And I've just been told that we get the chance to talk to Brad DeLosa, the world champion from 2013. Uh, what he has to say about uh, what just happened in that discipline, well, we'll find out this very moment. Brad? Yeah, I didn't quite go to plan, really. I was a little bit fat in the a little bit flat in the front, and then I also, um, yeah, had a little bit of a knot in there. So, yeah, it wasn't quite early. I went for 80 in the front, and then I was sort of, you know, hopefully sort of eight to eight to nine in the back, and I think it was 11. So, yeah, a couple of little extra hits there that um, really cost me, and also twisted and hung on the back. So, yeah, that'll be pretty uh, detrimental to me time, I'd say. Well, and of course, uh, Brad wants to be in the top eight to move on to round number two. If he will succeed, well, we'll find out in just a few moments as we proceed to heat number five. Cody Steers held the Australian record in the standing block back in 2016. Meanwhile, Braden Meyer has the current national record in standing block of 1233. So there's a massive difference in the time here for personal best between these two guys. And we already know that Braden Meyer is an absolute lightning fast ax man. So let's see if the Cobra can take down Stand some lightning here timber. in this heat. Three, two, one, go! Once again, Braden Meyer gets right into it with those really fast swings. He's not only quick with the axe in the underhand chop, he's also quick with the axe in the standing block chop. Cody Steers took a little bit longer to move over to the backside where Braden Meyer was already taking his first two swings, but Cody Steers, wow, fantastic finish for him with a 17-8-2 Braden Meyer with a 19-9-4, and that was unexpected, and I think that the Cobra just caught lightning in a bottle. The cut is good. The cut is good. Well, that was unexpected. I thought for sure Braden Meyer would go through on this one. Their time difference in their personal best was quite significant, but Cody Steers with a fantastic effort in the final. He actually came around to the backside of his block after Braden Meyer by at least two to three strokes and managed to do a great job just to take down the top of that block with some big power drives. And this last one right here, yeah, that was the killer right there. Fantastic job by him to take out one of the best Axemen out there. So Cody Steers with a 17-8-2 slips into second place. Braden Meyer moves into fourth place in standing block chop. That means... Whoa, Brad DeLosa is in a bit of trouble here. He drops down to 10th place. Meyer and Steers are respectively in positions two and three in the overall rankings. And that means we're not gonna see Brad DeLosa in the next round, which is unfortunate, but we still have one more heat to go. And that's between Glenn Gillum and Mitch Argent. Now, Glenn Gillum is an absolute master at this discipline. Where you saw Braden Meyer on the underhand chop, this is Glenn Gillum in standing block chop. John is ready. Timber is ready. That's right, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. 
All right, Mitch Argent and Glenn Gillum getting at it right away. Mitch Argent looking actually very good as he slabs out some nice pieces from his block. Glenn Gillum moving to the other side quickly. Now Mitch Argent, two strokes in for Glenn Gillum, and Argent's already onto the backside of his. A couple of hops by Glenn Gillum, and that caused him problems, and Mitch Argent actually beat Glenn Gillum by one second and some change. So a great job by Mitch Argent to take down a man who good. absolutely dominates at this discipline. Cut is good. There you see Glenn Gillum. These are some really good cuts here, but there was one where he just skipped a little bit. Mitch Argent, meanwhile, he just had some very accurate, very deep cuts and I guess he might have also gotten a little bit lucky with this last drive right here where he took the top off. Nicely done by Mitch Argent though. Great job to beat Glenn Gillum in a discipline where he is normally unbeatable. So let's take a look at the rankings here in the standing block chop. So Mitch Argent moves up to the top of the standing block chop. Great job by him, pushing O'Toole and Steers down. Gillum sits in fourth place with Rumor, Meyer, and Dingle in the top seven. And Owen down there in eighth. We could see Brad DeLosa in ninth. In the overall standings, there's a big switch. Lawrence O'Toole back on top again. Mitch Argent and Glenn Gillum in two and three respectively. Braden Meyer in four, still in striking distance. It's getting exciting now. And that concludes round one of the Steel Timber Sports Virtual Australian Championship. Let's take a closer look how our top eight athletes made their points. Troy. Well, you can see in each of the different disciplines in the, the rows there, underhand chops, stock saw and standing block chop, all of those points are added up and that gives you our total and of course as we said the top eight will move on to the next round so lawrence o'toole mitch argent glenn gillum the top three guys after those first three disciplines in round one will be among the top eight that will move on to the next round and we can see unfortunately for Gur, delosa uh, bakes and owen we're not going to see them in the next round, especially for DeLosa. That's a bit of a surprise because he is an absolute legend in the sport. But it was a stock saw problem and a standing block that just didn't go to plan, as he said in his interview. You know, his front side was a little bit flat and uh, it just didn't work out the way that he wanted. And having Braden Meyer in fourth position is a bit of a surprise to me, to be honest. Yeah, it's not really a big surprise. I mean, it is surprising because he's usually a little bit stronger, but his standing block chop, I was actually surprised that he didn't win his standing block chop. And, uh, you know, that he's in fourth position isn't the end of the world for him because he's one of those guys that is just tends to get stronger as the competition goes on. So, so he's still in striking distance. Let's not count him out just yet. <laughs> okay, yeah. let's not count him out just yet. I'll take you for that. But let's take a closer look uh, at the top two here in the standing block chop competition at Mitch Argent and uh, Lawrence O'Toole in a head to head. All right, let's take a look back at the side-by-side -side review of this heat between Lawrence O'Toole and Mitch Argent. Mitch Argent working the axe a little bit faster than Lawrence O'Toole, but you'll see here, Lawrence O'Toole is the first guy to get to the other side, starts working on the back side of his log. Mitch Argent opting to go a little bit deeper on the front side, and now they're more or less stroke for stroke, but it's Mitch Argent dropping the block before Lawrence O'Toole. Great job. And uh, that boded well for both of those gentlemen, especially for Lawrence O'Toole, now that he's leading in the overall standings and moving on to the next round with a little bit of a buffer. <laughs> that was quite impressive, to be honest. Um, Try one thing I want to know from you. How long have you been uh, around considering timber sports? Yeah, I mean, uh, my first uh, live event was in Poland in 2015, uh, and I had been uh, doing the magazine shows before that. So, I mean, we get to see these guys all these years. And I remember doing the magazine shows, and I'm thinking, what a great sport. And then I got to Poland and saw the first live event, and I'm in... I was absolutely, as they say here, flashed. I, it just is incredible. But, but, but no black and white pictures from you. Oh, you're fine. being funny over here. I see the guy's being a comedian. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not that old. Thanks very much for the compliment. Yeah, but you've been around quite some time. And uh, if you want to know more about the history of timber sports, we'll take a look at this. Third woodsman who can cut down a tree more easily than most people can chop one up. When it really comes to tackling large lumps, you can't beat the men of the forestry companies. Well.
Well, I'm not sure if you guys can see this. Goosebumps, the history of steel timber sports. But let's take a look at the future. We are getting ready for round number two. Troy, a bit of a surprise. Absolutely. Well, we saw in round one the three disciplines and uh, Brad DeLosa, one of our favorites who we mentioned off the top of the show, struggling in the stock saw and the standing block chop, unfortunately gets surprisingly eliminated. So now we take a look at what it's going to look like for round two, and that's the single buck and springboard disciplines. And it will be the top eight athletes from round number one, moving on to round two. So it's going to be getting interesting now because we have the pain whip as the first <laughs> discipline in round two. Yeah, and that's the single buck. Let's take a closer look. Single buck. The single buck is a one-man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc from a 40 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. The athletes are going to need rhythm and strength in Heat 1. We'll see David Rumer take on Jamie Head, followed by Heat 2 with Brody Dingle and Cody Stiz. In Heat 3, there'll be Braden Meyer and Glenn Gillum. And in Heat 4, Mitch Argent taking on Lawrence O'Toole. Let the games begin or commence. Troy. Commence works for me. Begins is also <laughs> just fine. Let's put these guys in the blocks and uh, get ready to go. I mean, this discipline is is an interesting one because, like you said, rhythm and strength play a role, but also endurance is a big deal here because you have to be able to keep that saw moving. If you get it caught, if it gets stuck, if the angle is wrong, and you, you do hook not up want one that. of those teeth then you're going to be in big trouble. So our first heat in single buck, David Rumer going up against Jamie Head. Now, both of these guys pretty tall, or well, rather David Rumer is pretty tall. Jamie Head not so much at 175, but Jamie Head definitely has the Stand pedigree here timber. with the stock saw, or with Three, the uh, single two, buck, excuse one, me. Go! So it's about getting a good start and using that entire saw. Now, you see Rumor, he's using those frantic quick cuts, but he's got a big problem. He got stuck for a good second there if you did the 1-1000 count, and that managed to give Jamie Head a huge advantage. And now Jamie Head gets stuck as well, giving it back to David Rumor, but Jamie Head manages to get through it anyway. Wow, he got lucky right there, and you got to be good to be lucky and lucky to be good. Jamie Head with a time of 18.39. David Rumor with a time of 19.42. That is good. A couple of scary moments for both that of those guys, though. Both cuts are good. I want to look back at this replay here because David Rumor, he did those really quick choppy strokes, whereas... Jamie Head started off with big, long, flowing strokes, and that was to his advantage, actually. And Rumor, he got caught big time right in here, and that saw stopped for a good one second at least. And uh, that was his undoing as Jamie managed to keep going, keep that saw cutting from the long, straight strokes. And uh, unfortunately for David Rumor, he just, that one second was the difference maker. So Jamie Head and David Rumor are our first athletes to take down single buck, therefore getting the points respectively. Jamie Head, those 16 points go to him, and it's a two points difference between the top guys now. Um, in the overall ranking, you just saw Jamie Head and David Rumor doing a little bit of shifting around in there. Top spots. And now we're moving to heat number two, 
with Brody Dingle going up against Cody Steers. Cody Steers, personal best time for him, 15.32, and Brody Dingle, 16.41. What we should mention here is the wood that they're using is hoop Stand pine from Queensland, which is a native species Three, to Australia. Two, one, so it's a little bit go. harder than the wood they're using in Europe and North America. So that's making the times a little bit slower here as well. Wow, Steers. He is working that saw from tip to tail, and it's fast. He's going to have a good time here by the looks of it, even with that wood being as it is. Oh, no! He broke off a piece. He needs to keep going, and that is going to be as close as it gets. 18.63 for Dingle and 18.76 for Steers. And it was just an unfortunate break because of a saw bend or a twist. I don't know. We'll have to see back at the replay. Cut is good. Let's see if the cut is okay for Steers. And they're double-checking it now. It has to be a complete cookie. So I just heard the okay. judge say it's all the there. Is good. Yep, so we have a good cut from Cody Steers and uh, David Rumer. So both of them are fine, but it was just that last little hit by Cody Steers. And watch this. He was using, like I said, tip to tail on that saw and fast. Rumer, on the other hand, he wasn't using the entire saw, but he had quick strokes in the middle. Now watch right here. Yeah, the saw twist breaks off the cookie a little bit and he had to keep cutting to make sure that the rest of that cookie fell off. And for Rumor, it was a nice clean cut and steers as well. So, uh, or uh, Brody Dingle and Cody Steers. Mixing up the guys in that heat. So Dingle and Steers with an 18.63 and 18.76. So just in second and third positions here. And in the overall, Steers moves into the top spot with Dingle right behind him and Jamie Head sitting in third place. All right, Braden Meyer. If you're going to say that anybody's got a weak discipline, this would be the one for Braden Meyer, and it's not even that weak. Look at the time for him, 12.97. Glenn Gillum, 14.61, but he's been working hard on this particular discipline and wants to have... A little bit of revenge here on Braden Meyer in this discipline. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Now watch the style differences between these two. Braden Meyer starts off with some quick strokes and then just like with his axe, starts to use that entire saw and works it quickly. Glenn Gillum doing the same thing though. A little bit of a longer stroke by Glenn Gillum, and boy, Braden Meyer and Glenn Gillum both with great times, but Glenn Gillum slightly better with a 17.40, and Braden Meyer, or 15.40, excuse me, I can't read, and Braden Meyer with a 15.74. Couple of good cuts by these guys. Glenn Gillum just using every ounce of his poor body strength to try and really work that saw. Meanwhile, Braden Meyer has got a good stroke there, but uh, Glenn Gillum was just a little bit more efficient with that single buck. Good job by both of these guys, though. So, Glenn Gillum and Braden Meyer with the fastest time so far by, yeah, a good amount. Um, 1540, 1574. So they are going to be taking the top points with one more heat to go. Mitch Argent, Lawrence O'Toole. And this is arguably one of the stronger disciplines for Lawrence O'Toole when he comes into this one. Mitch Argent hasn't really been focusing on the single buck in the early days of his competition life, but he has put in the hard work to try and really improve this discipline and he has become one of the masters on it. And unfortunately, we don't see Brad DeLosa in this second round of the competition, but if anybody in Australia is a master of this discipline, it's him. So Mitch Argent, you can see the time there for personal best 15.86 and uh, Lawrence O'Toole, personal best 11.75. Let's see how they do. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. 
So you can see Lawrence O'Toole deep in the knees, using those long legs to try and push off that back leg and use as much of his long body to try and work that entire saw through. The Mitch Argent, though, has a really quick cut time by the looks of it. 16.95 and a 17.44 for Lawrence O'Toole. So Mitch Argent just slightly better today, and that extra time that he's put in working on this single buck has really paid off. Cut is good. Cut is good. So the cuts are good for both of these guys, but their times are not as fast as Glenn Gillum and Braden Meyer. So they are sitting in third and, uh, me, third and fourth places relative to the single buck ranking. We look back here. Yeah, there's those long strokes from Lawrence O'Toole, usually an advantage, perhaps saw choice in this particular situation was the difference maker. Who knows? It's sometimes a bit of luck and sometimes a bit of kismet, but uh, a great job by Mitch Argent. So Mitch Argent, Lawrence O'Toole, third and fourth in the single buck ranking. And you can see the time differences are quite significant there between the top two and then three, four, five, and six as we move down the list. Glenn Gillum and Braden Meyer with the faster times. Let's see how this changes the overall. Ooh, not bad. Mitch Argent stays in third place in the overall. And Lawrence O'Toole is now in second place in the overall. Tied, actually, with Mitch Argent. Interesting. Well, absolutely interesting, just like you said, Troy. But let's take a closer look at all four disciplines that we've seen so far and where the athletes collected the points. All right. In the overall standings, you can see Glenn Gillum uh, some good points collected in the underhand chop as well as in the standing or the uh, single buck. Uh, not as strong in stock saw or standing block chop. And uh, he's got the 43 points for the overall at the moment, though. So it doesn't mean you have to win every single discipline to be on top. Lawrence O'Toole, though, right there. And Braden Meyer still sitting in fourth place within striking distance. And you can see there's only four points difference between fourth and first place. So he does have an opportunity to step up in the game. O'Toole and Mitch Argent tied with 40 points each. So that would come down to timing. And as always, we want to take a closer look at the top two. And that was heat number three. That was Glenn Gillum and Braden Meyer. Let's take an analysis close look at this, uh, Troy. Uh, why was Glenn faster than Braden? I want to know that from you now. Well, this is the side-by-side <laughs> -side once again. And uh, you can see these two guys battling head-to-head. -head. Glenn Gillum going for those fast strokes. Two of them are actually, you know, really quick on the strokes. But uh, Braden Meyer just using a little bit more of the saw. But I'm surprised Glenn Gillum got the faster hit on the disc at the end. But it was not that much between them in the difference. So a couple of good guys there who uh, are not really working in their strongest discipline, quite honestly. And uh, let's take a closer look at Lawrence O'Toole. He's in striking distance. He's in position number two. And we are going to get the chance to talk to him right now. Lawrence, over to you all the way to down under Australia. Yeah, well, I didn't hang up, so that's always a bonus. I just felt like I was in nowhere land for a bit, just pulling it back and forwards. I almost felt like I was in the champion's trophy. wasn't really on top of it, but, uh, you know is what it is and now I'm ready for the springboard so I'm looking forward to that. Well he's not the only one uh, looking forward to springboard so are we and all you need to know about this discipline is coming up for you right now. Springboard Springboard simulates the traditional way of felling trees climbing up over thick roots. First notches known as pockets are chopped into the log. Two springboards are then anchored into these pockets. The athlete then climbs up to chop through a 27 centimeter thick block of wood in the fastest time possible. Second and last discipline of round number two coming up, the springboard. Let's take a look at the bracket before we do so. All right, so round two, we've already seen the single buck K get taken down. And, uh, you know, that sets us up for an interesting springboard competition because 
that uh, changes our overall standings. Lawrence O'Toole, who was in the lead for a while, is now sitting in second place. Glenn Gillum is in good position to try and do well, but Glenn Gillum is not the strongest at springboard. Meanwhile, Braden Meyer and Lawrence O'Toole both have very solid springboard passes. So let's see if they can do any damage here. Mitch Argent also no slouch when it comes to springboard. And this is going to be the determining factor to see which of the top six guys will move on to the all favorite hot saw for you gas heads out there. I'm totally and completely confused now. Let's just move on to the springboard because anything and everything is possible in this amazing competition. This is the start list. In heat one, we'll have David Rumer take on Jamie Head. In heat two, it's going to be Brody Dingle and Cody Stiz. Heat three consists of Braden Meyer and Glenn Gillum. And finally, in heat four, we'll have Mitch Argent take on Lawrence O. Tool can't wait for Springboard to start. Camera crew ready. Well, there you see Camera David Rumor, and this will be a first for Absolutely him because ready. they don't have the Springboard in the rookie competition. So for him, it'll be the first time. Jamie Head, uh, he's hot and cold with this particular discipline. Um, you know, sometimes he's on, sometimes he's off. And we often mention this about the number of hits it takes to create a pocket to set your first board in. So we'll take a real close look at that during the heat. So first heat up, David Rumor up against Jamie Head. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So the perfect situation is if you can hit four hits to make your pocket, and Jamie Head has just done that. Rumor, though, doing very well, considering this is his first time in competition doing the springboard. So uh, he's up there on his board, while Jamie Head is now setting, I think that was a six-hit pocket there in his second, and he'll get up onto that top board and start working on the block on the top. What's very important here is to make sure that you get a good solid pocket so that that springboard holds its position so that you can use your legs to push and get a little bit more power into the ax. If the springboard starts to sag at all, then you're gonna be using your arms and your upper body more and you get tired very quickly. Now, Jamie Head is already very, very deep onto the first side. He'll switch his hand position and foot position and start going from the back side, which is that awkward cut you're seeing right now. And David Rumer, meanwhile, he's doing a great job for his first time. Jamie Head with a 52.75 in springboard. Good job for him. Puts him in second place in the overall and first place in springboard. David Rumer. You got to give him props. He's not given up. He's gone deep on the first side. This is his first time in springboard in the competition. Jamie Head clearly winded. And Rumor, he just doesn't want to go on that awkward side. And uh, he's trying to get through as deep as possible. But now he's going on to the backside with that awkward shortcut. And uh, yeah, you know, this is like I said, first time for him because they don't do the springboard in the rookie competition. With that final blow, 135-66. Puts him in sixth place overall, second place because of the heat here in Springboard. <clears throat> Great job, though, by Jamie Head in this first heat. So we can say hot good. and cold. He was hot on this one. Yep. Cut is good. So one, two, three. I'm going to say that's four because I think I missed his first hit. That was a great pocket for Jamie Head. And uh, he was quick up onto that board and did a great job to get up and uh, have a good solid second board. You can see the angle right there and that final blow from Jamie Head. And the axe goes down with the block. This was a nice final cut also from David Rumer. So you know he's going to be thinking about this and uh, taking a look at video footage and uh, looking at what he can do to improve this particular discipline now that he's up with the big boys. All right, and there's the change in the overall standings. Rumor is in sixth place with Jamie Head now sitting in second place. But yeah, we've still got a few more heats to go. So Brody Dingle having a quick inspection of his log. He's got a great personal best of 52.77 set at last year's champion championship, but it wasn't enough 
to get him over to the hot saw. He's going up against Cody Sears. Steers, excuse me, and uh, he is yet to cut under a minute. Is this weekend his weekend? Let's find out. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! So Cody Steers on the right in yellow. Brody Dingle on the left in the purple. Good first pocket by Dingle and from Steers. Looks like Steers been working here. So it's going to be all about getting up there and having a good cut on that top block. If he can get that second pocket set quickly, which he seems to have done. Cleared it out with his hands. Oh! but his board fell down. That's going to cost him some big time. He needs to be back up on his first board to set the second board now. Meanwhile, Dingle has already started working the block on top, and obviously Cody Steers had some extra material left in the pocket, and that's going to play head games with him now that he's up there with that sharp axe. You don't want to have that board slipping out while you're standing up there on that thing two meters off the ground. Dingle, on the other hand, has moved over to the other side. A couple of backside cuts for him should do it. And he should come in under a minute. He does. 56-4-8. And that's second place in springboard and third in the overall. If you look at that orange field with the white number it, that's the overall position. Cody Steers. And again, he hasn't come in under a minute, unfortunately, for him. And it was pretty much in this case, he looked great right off the hop. But I think in this case, it was because that board slipped out. He had to go around, collect it, lean it up, and reset everything. And then uh, that was the problem for him. So let's take a look back at the slow-mos here of the springboard. It's one hit, two hits. Oh, okay, we're not going to stay with, Ding uh, with uh, Steers, unfortunately. But that first pocket for Cody Steers was great. Got him up there nice and fast. Dingle, on the other hand, he got up top, and uh, he had under a minute springboard, so that was a great showing for him as well. So Brody Dingle, second place. Cody Steers, a 113.86, is still a little bit faster than David Rumer. So he is sitting in third place in springboard with Dingle in second place. Jamie Head still holding down the top for the 52.75 is the time to beat in springboard. Let's take a look at the overall, how that affects things here. So the juggling begins. Glenn Gillum still holding down the top spot with 43 points. Jamie Head now in second with Dingle sitting in third place, 40 points. Look at that. Two, three, four, five, all with 40 points. Braden Meyer up next, though, going up against Glenn Gillum. So two guys that uh, are definitely skilled. Braden Meyer, I'm going to say, is slightly better here than Glenn Gillum with the springboard. And you can see that is reflected in the time. Personal best for Braden Meyer is a very impressive 3684. Let's see if he can get anywhere close to that today. And if Glenn Gillum has, do, has done some work in the off timber. time to uh, improve Three, his springboard. Three, two, one, go! Good quick pocket by Braden Meyer. Glenn Gillum just a stroke behind him there as they both get up on to the board for setting their second pockets. And you know Braden Meyer works with the axe a lot, so he is very familiar with it. So is Glenn Gillum. And Braden Meyer has now moved up onto the top springboard, and he's testing that thing just gingerly to make sure that he has that pressure that he needs. Glenn Gillum, he's about five or six strokes behind Braden Meyer now, coming onto the top to get working on that top block. Braden Meyer, meanwhile, has gone nice and deep on that top block. He needs to cut from both sides, so he's got himself a real deep wedge, and he'll switch over to the other side shortly. Glenn Gillum, meanwhile, just passing the 48 mark here, is still working on the front side. And Braden Meyer, he's not going to get his personal best anywhere close, but he's going to be under a minute on this one with a 56-18. First place in springboard for Braden Meyer. And, oh, a good time for Glenn Gillum with a 1-0-0-3-4. The cop is good. So uh, both of these guys looking like they're getting good cuts. And that means... The cop was good. We're going to see some shifting here. Let's take a look at our replay. And 
Glenn Gillum setting up his first board to get up on top. And Braden Meyer, ah, there was a four, now ah, maybe a six hit pocket. And there's the backside strokes, that awkward angle like I like to talk about. And uh, Braden Meyer looking pretty confident at this point. And that is going to mean big things for Braden Meyer. If anybody can beat that time, eh, it's going to be tough. So look, it's uh, Braden Meyer in second place with a 56.18, just behind Jamie Head. Glenn Gillum with a one minute or 100.34. So he's a few seconds off pace. Let's take a look at the overall now. Ooh, Braden Meyer now moves into the lead with Glenn Gillum right behind him. 53 points tie the two. So if it comes down to a tie at the end, it will be about the times and Braden Meyer would win it. Lawrence O'Toole shifts down to fourth place and we have one more heat. Speaking of Lawrence O'Toole, we have him going up against this man, Mitchell Argent. This should be a strong discipline for Lawrence O'Toole unless his head is getting around him. So Mitchell Argent, Lawrence O'Toole, and both of them have pretty respectable times. Personal bests definitely give the advantage to Lawrence O'Toole with a 39-44, but Mitchell Argent, no slouch with a 48-10. Stand to your timber. Argent Three, definitely has two, one, the go. chance to... Oh, I think there might have been an early start by Mitchell Argent there. I can't be sure, but it looks like uh, he might have cut into the log before the official go. Lawrence O'Toole now setting his second pocket. Mitchell Argent just cleaning out his. Lawrence O'Toole has got his board in place. Argent taking a little bit of extra time now to set his board and it's looking a little bit wobbly and sagging low. Now that's going to pro cause problems for Argent because he's going to have to work with most of his upper body and not be able to use his legs. Lawrence O'Toole meanwhile has the ability with the angle of his board to use that back leg to put some power into his strokes and he's already moved on to the backside. Mitchell Argent still struggling to try the front side. Oh my goodness, a great time by Lawrence O'Toole of 43-17. Mitchell Argent, that board is just too saggy. He has no opportunity to put power into his strokes so he's using all arm and chest to get it done and that causes a lot of fatigue and a 1019. Fourth place overall right there for Mitch the Argent and a great time for Lawrence O'Toole. Come on, All right, so there you can see Mitch Argent just struggling with that top block because that uh, springboard for him was just a little bit too much of a down angle on that back foot. Didn't have the power. Lawrence O'Toole had a good angle on that second block. So the springboard, wow, great time by O'Toole with a 43-17. Takes a top spot. Jamie Head right behind him. Third place goes to Braden Meyer. Fifth is Mitchell Argent in that heat against Lawrence O'Toole. And I guess we'll have a look back at uh, O'Toole and Head in the uh, split screen. And that means in the overall standings, Lawrence O'Toole moves into the top spot with 56. But look at this, Braden Meyer coming from behind, moving into second place with 51. And Glenn Gillum, not that far off with 49. Mitch Argent as a 48. So it's getting a little bit fun now. Yeah, Troy is getting excited. And, and so am I. Uh, springboard really is something special. And, and Troy, that's one thing I need to, to ask you. Those, some of those guys, they're pretty massive, but they move up that tree and onto those boards like Panthers. Well, yeah, I mean, these guys, they, smooth, they, yeah. they, they look like big boys, and they are they big are boys. They are big boys, but they are. have you ever seen a, an American football player, how quickly they can move? These guys are sort of similar in that respect. So, you know, they're very, very quick when it comes to it. So there we see the overall standings in Lawrence O'Toole, 56, only four, five points ahead of Braden Meyer. Glenn Gillum with a 49, still in striking distance if we have an interesting hot sauce competition, but... We have to remember that only the top six guys after round two will be moving through into the hot sauce. Well, having said this, uh, it's time to take a look at the top two in this discipline, and that's Lawrence O'Toole against Jamie 
head. All right, so you can see here, Lawrence O'Toole and Jamie Head, stroke for stroke, boards in almost exactly at the same time. The difference here, Lawrence O'Toole getting that second pocket started quickly. And uh, I think that was five or six hits for a second pocket. Jamie Head now just a tick behind O'Toole as they get up onto the top. Look at the angle on both of those boards, though. Looking very good. And here, it's the advantage to O'Toole in this case because he's got those long legs, those long arms. He can really work from the back of the board, pushing off that back foot. And there's not a lot of spring coming from that board. Whereas Jamie Head, you know, he's using everything he's got, but... Uh, he didn't shift over to the backside as quickly as O'Toole did. And you can see here, it took a couple of hits for Jamie on the backside. And uh, I think it was three or four hits to get that block down. There it is. And it goes with the ax, but O'Toole was just like three, four hits faster than Jamie Head was. So there you go. Head-to-head -head analysis and your grind out <laughs> yes and it's, I, I i think it'd be nice to see the schedule for more steel timber sports uh, let's take a look uh, what you can get on demand and of course uh, what competitions we had in 2020 here you can see uh, everything uh, that has been happening so far which you can get video on demand uh, well we're live with the virtual australian championship at the moment and i'm afraid we have to say that the individual world championship uh, has to be cancelled due to covid 19 but if you feel like uh, owning your very own steel saw like uh, troy for instance uh, take a closer look at what we have to offer for you now for a better way to buy garden power tools go to your local steel dealer They'll familiarise you with the tool and can get it ready to go. Better still, they can service it too. So it'll last for years. Steel Tools, only from steel dealers. There's 600 nationally. Find yours at steel.com.au. Better still. I really want one of those saws. Troy, can you get me one for Christmas? I'll Please. see what I could do, Marcus. Uh, MS661 coming up. I'll put it in your stock. I'll take it. Stuffer. And of course, now it's all about saws. Uh, it's the hot saw coming up. And as we've mentioned so many times before, this is the maker or the breaker. This is the one Looking at the individual competition, most of the time, it's the hot saw that makes the difference. Yeah, probably the most important event, but uh, yeah, also the most frustrating. These saws are so incredibly powerful and dangerous. Usually the hot saw is the decider. Stand to your timber. Hot saw. Hot saw. Like I can't describe to you when we're out there under pressure. Saw starts well, first disc looks solid. The cut is good. You know, you're always ending the competition on a hot saw, so you know where you're going to be at when you finish. So you're either at a barrel big high or just is what it is. Nice, clean cuts, easy and relaxed. The hot saw is for me the geilste discipline of the world. <laughs> Five, six, eight, Robert Ecker, three on the deck. Once the competition comes, anything can happen. Oh no, a false start by Sterling Hart. What a disaster. Yeah, it was a disappointment for me. It uh, happens though, it's part of competing. I saw there's three good discs there, but then they let that nose come right up underneath the crossover line. Fortunately, a disqualification. It all relies on the hot saw. If you have bad luck or if you did, did wrong, it's, it's part. Just oh it. no, oh, my goodness. What an absolute disaster. The chain came off. I was not disappointed because everybody see that I can be with the guys in front. Yeah, it's the make or break event, you know. I think you love it and you hate it. Just try to make three good cuts and no disqualification. The hot saw is where it's all one, so that's the best event. Well, we see from round two, the results from the springboard and how that affects the overall results, meaning the top six guys move on to round three and our King's Discipline, the hot saw. And that means Lawrence O'Toole, Braden Meyer, Glenn Gillum, Mitch Argent, Jamie Head, and Mr. Dingle. 
race. Brody Dingle will be in there and will go in reverse order for the start list. Oh, yes, and we're very ready for this. I feel a little manly now. So <laughs> everything you need to know about the hot soul coming up right here. <laughs> Hot saw. For the hot saw, power saws are called into action and the athletes have a space of 15 centimeters to cut three complete discs off a 46 centimeter thick wooden block. Jumping the start or cutting over the line will result in a disqualification. These custom handmade race tune machines are built for maximum power and precision and to cut the wood as fast as possible in a competition. They are built with a 60 to 80 horsepower single cylinder two stroke engine, often taken from a snowmobile or high powered motorbike. The hot saw can weigh up to 30 kilograms and its chain rotates at over 250 kilometers an hour. The cost of a competition hot saw used in steel timber sports is upward of 6,000 euros. It is time to find out who's going to be the steel timber sports virtual Australian champion. It's time for the hot saw and this is the starting order. In heat one, Brody Dingle. Heat two, Jamie Head. Heat 3, Mitch Argent. Heat 4, Glenn Gillum. Heat 5, Braden Meyer. And last but not least, in Heat 6, Lawrence O'Toole. Dingle because he was ranked sixth in the overall before coming into this third and final round. He will be the first athlete to go in hot saw. His personal best is a very respectable 1020, but these Hands machines the are so unpredictable, anything can happen. Three, so it is two, all one, about starting go. the saw clean and getting three cookies on the floor with no breaks at all. Dingle. Looks good so far for him. A little pause at the top to realign that saw. And he has got three on the floor and a great time of 8.42. That is a very solid time. A good personal best for him. He improves on his 10 second personal best Cut from before. Good. And he's got three good cuts and he is good to go. He'll be happy with that no matter what happens in the competition today. And that one happened fast. See that great big blade comes up. He sets everything in place, and then it's about staying in alignment, not cutting through a cookie or over the line. Bit of a swing on that change in the transition from downstroke to upstroke. But on the upstroke transition on way, it's down. It looks very good for Brody Dingle. A very nice time of 8 4 2. All right, so there you see 18 points are available for the guy with the fastest time in the hot saw, which is why they call this the make or break discipline, because in the overall standings, you could see those 18 points move Dingle from sixth place up into second. Yeah, so if all of these other guys completely mess up their runs, theoretically, Lawrence O'Toole could walk away with the win and Brody Dingle a silver medal. You never know, right? But <laughs> is that likely to happen? Probably not. So Jamie Head next up. Now these guys usually do get a chance to warm up their saws beforehand and you can see his personal best is two seconds faster than Brody Dingle. So Jamie had definitely an advantage here in the hot saw plus his experience plays a massive role in this one as well. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Wow, very thin first cookie. Thin to win is the key. That second one was massively thick, though. And the third cut looks good. Did he go over the line, though? He came real close at a 6.87. And he's just clearing that space for the judge to make sure. But it looks like he has cut through the cookie or gone over the line. And he is super disappointed as he throws his... That is good. He throws his earphones down in disgust. I don't know what happened though, though. The cuts were good and his time didn't seem too bad. Let's take a look here. 
bit of a delay getting into the log. Really thin first cookie. Nothing wrong with that. Thin to win, as they say. The second cookie was a beast, though. You could hold a car in place with that thing. And then the third cookie, very close to the line. Doesn't look like he cut over it. The judge said the cuts were good, so that should be a counting cut. No problem there. And his time of... 687 puts him in first place. I don't know why his disappointment and throwing down the headphones was so bad, though. Let's see. 18 points in the hot saw for Jamie Head. 687. Um, yeah, maybe it was just not what he expected. Jamie Head has the top spot in the overall standings for now. Brody Dingle moves down into third place. Mitch Argent up next. Mitch Argent had a similar personal best time than uh, that Brody Dingle did coming into this. Maybe uh, he'll improve on it as well. Hands on the wood! Stand to your timber! All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go! Took him a long time to pull that starter. Wow, thick second cookie lined up really gingerly carefully for that third cookie cut through it. He's got to do another one. He has barely any space at all to get that third cookie down. Oh my goodness. A 17.25 time in hot saw. There's a disappointed face right there. Cut through, I believe, that third cookie. Yeah, you can see it's not complete, so you had to cut reset. Line. An insufficient cookie. Ah, uh, yeah. So he's got a DQ, and that's unfortunate for Mitchell Argent. Let's take a look at what happened here. It took him a long time to line up that first cookie. Ah, uh, yeah. There's the first cookie cutout. No, excuse me. That was his third cookie cutout. And then he had to go in. He didn't have enough space. Look at that right on the line. He just had no chance here at all. And he even chopped off the top edge of that third cookie. So there was really no opportunity for him. And this is one of the reasons why they say thin to win, because that middle cookie for him was absolutely massive, just like with Jamie Heads. So a DQ for Mitch Argent, cut over the line is the reason why, zero points. So he stays in third place after three athletes in the hot saw and Mitch Argent is sitting in sixth place in the overall standings now. Oh, wow. I really feel sorry for Mitch Argent. Um, uh, let's find out from him what he thinks uh, this is going to do to his overall ranking. Oh, probably last place. <laughs> I don't know, headache. Yeah, shirotsu. What else do you want? <laughs> Yeah, this really is the maker or the breaker, the hot saw. Uh, Troy, let's get back to the competition. It's time for our next heat. All right, Glenn Gillum up next, and uh, you can see him just making the last minute checks of his saw. You can see a personal best for him is pretty solid. I mean, you got to be a big boy to control this saw, to be able to manage to get it up in line and position. You can see in those first three heats already um, what kind of a drama it is to move that huge, heavy motor Stand saw into to position timber. to start your first cut. Three. Let's see how two, Glenn does. One, go! go. Seven three zero, not bad. Very respectable, fastest time so far. No, excuse me, second fastest time in hot saw. Three good cookies, and if we look back in the slow mo later on, you'll see that second cookie was nice and thin. So that was important, and he's got three good cookies on the floor. So that's the difference maker for Glenn Gillum. Watch this here. Good start, and he's on the upstroke with that saw as he's pulling. And look at the lineup. Perfect alignment on that first cut. It's not overly thin, not overly thick. This is the important one here that we've seen all day on that second cut. Hopefully we'll get another view of it here. It's that second cut on the upstroke that should be nice and thin. And then you can see on the downstroke, he's got another thin cookie. So if 
there is a mistake made. He's still got three or four centimeters of block that he can go back up and cut with. So a very, very good cut from Glenn Gillum. He would like a better time, but he is in second place at the moment, just behind Jamie Head. And that means in the overall standings, he moves into the lead with 64 points. Braden Meyer up next. Check out that saw. That's about as custom as it gets. Now, Braden Meyer doesn't have the biggest love affair with this particular event, although his time of 7.43 is pretty solid. He's been working on it, and, uh, you know, obviously he's got the pretty sexy Stand looking saw right there. Timber. Let's see if he can pull Three, this one off and two, have a good time. One, go! Great start. Messing around with a 580. First place for him in Hot Saw. Ha <laughs> ha! He just tore that to bits and he has just ruined his personal best with a 580. Fantastic job by Braden Meyer. Watch this. Upstroke pull. The thing is running perfectly lined up. Bit thick on the first cut, but so what? Look at how nice it is. And barely a downswing on the changeover. And then that third cookie. And he's making no mistakes to make sure these cookies are thin enough, but not thin enough that they're gonna break on hitting the floor. Good job by Braden Meyer a, with a fantastic time, 5.80. That puts him atop the hot saw rankings. And for the moment, he takes the 18 points home, which means in the overall, he should be on top with a bullet. Yes, 69 points. Lawrence O'Toole at 56 has to be absolutely rocket ship for his hot saw. So let's see if he can do it. Ooh, look at the personal best for O'Toole. You know that he has got this thing locked and loaded. He wants to have a good hot saw. The pressure is entirely on him at this point if he wants to have the win and take home the Australian Stand Virtual Championships. Three, Three, two, two one, go. go! Oh, no! A huge mistake, a non-start. The pull cord came off completely and that saw did not start. So he'll have to rewrap and restart just to get the points for the time. Let's see if he can make it happen here. Checks everything, gets it started, and here we go. All right, 26.59. That is third place for Lawrence O'Toole in the overall standings and not the expected time that he wanted to have here in Hot Saw. The cuts were good, but the time was not. So for Lawrence O'Toole, that means he is sitting in fifth place after Hot Saw or in the Hot Saw rankings. And you can see there, the chain did move on the first pull, but the engine didn't turn over, it didn't kick, the spark didn't take, and then when he finally got it going, his time was well and truly done for. But he did get a time, which means he will get some points, and that is important for the overall standings. All right, so hot saw ranking. Braden Meyer still on top because of Lawrence's time of 26.59. He'll sit down in fifth place. And Braden Meyer taking the full 18 points home here. And then we take a quick look at the overall standings. Yeah, Lawrence O'Toole, by virtue of getting some points, actually moves into second place with 62 points just behind Braden Meyer. And Glenn Gillum has third place. All right, here we see side by side. Braden Meyer was just that much quicker on the draw. One second better than Jamie Head. Jamie was upset by his results, but hey, good job by Braden. That was really close. And the old Australian champion is the new virtual Australian champion. Let's take a closer look at the overall standing. So these are the final results. In position 12, we've got Chris Owen, 11, Josh Bakes. On 10, Brad DeLosa. 9, Daniel Gurr. 8, David Rumer. In 7, Cody Steers. 6, Brody Dingle. 5, Mitch Argent. 4, Jamie Head. And the top 3 in bronze, Glenn Gillum. 
in silver, Lawrence O'Toole. And the gold medal goes to, as mentioned before, Braden Meyer. Congratulations to all athletes. And now it's time for a virtual winner's ceremony. So here is the bronze medalists of the 2020 Steel Timber Sports Virtual Australian Championship. Glenn Gillum. We move on to silver. And the silver medal goes to Lawrence O'Toole, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a big virtual hand. Troy and me were clapping in the studio. Well done. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the old and new virtual Australian champion, Braden Meyer. Oh, there he is, the big man. Virtual Australian champion, 2020. Well, now that the result is no secret to the world anymore, we can try to talk to Braden live. Uh, Braden, if you can hear me, congrats. And uh, just one question. How does it feel to be the first virtual Australian champion? Uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, it's a pretty good feeling to win the um, first virtual champion. Um, it's a different feeling than a normal championship, that's for sure. But it's a, it's a good honor to win as well. Well, Brayden, it's been your first time taking part in a virtual competition. Can we have a short feedback from your side? Yeah, it's completely different. Um, I'm one of them guys that thrive off the crowd um, during the competition as well and get the atmosphere going. And it, it, it always works in my favour, which, which is what I try and do. So it was def definitely different. And not knowing your times or anything like that, that was um, the hardest thing. But to um, get the win at the end of the day was pretty good. Well, thanks, Braden. It's been great talking to you. Any final words for the Steel Timber Sports community? Yeah, no, it's good to talk to you guys as well. Um, yeah, just thanks Steel Australia for putting a competition on for us this year. And um, I know it was hard work for them as well. And to organise it all, it's a pretty big job. So, yeah, congratulations to them. And just thanks all my family and um, everyone who helped me and um, support me back home. And... Um, yeah, just a message for everyone out there in the timber sports world. Keep training and, um, yeah, hope to see us all soon and hopefully we can have a world championship and a, and a trophy next year. So, yeah, keep training and um, best of luck to everyone and hope to see you in the, new, in the new future. Well, thanks very much, champ. Enjoy your night and congrats again. From a Troy and me, it's time to say goodbye. It's been an absolute pleasure. Hopefully, everybody's going to stay safe and, uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye-bye. Ciao. Virtual high five. Yeah.
very warm welcome to the first ever Steel Timber Sports Virtual Australian Championship. But what does virtual mean? Of course, we've got 12 real athletes competing in four different locations all across Australia. And we'll be recording all of them with identical video technology. And these videos, they will be sent to Munich, Germany, to me and our expert, Troy Mannering. Welcome, Troy. Nice to have you in the studio. Hey, Marcus. Glad to be back again. Yeah, we're uh, looking for a really interesting take on the Steel Timber Sports this time, the Australian Championships being virtual. We're going to see all these guys really working hard down there in split screen, and you're going to get to see the times that they have, but uh, they don't know what time they've got, um, and we only get to see the times as we go along here. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see how this turns out, and yeah, it's a new way of doing things. Yeah, these days, they need new ideas and i think that is something very special that we're looking forward to yeah i mean corona's made it really difficult with all the lockdowns and everything and travel restrictions and the fact that we're still able to get a little bit of sport in here it's great but you know with all of these other things that are going on uh, you know people's tensions are wound up so oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it's definitely very very important uh, to stay tolerant and to show respect and uh, yeah take a look at this We are Timber Sports, united by passion for the sport and the competition. We chop down racism and say yes to tolerance. Yes to tolerance. Say your tolerance. 